In this video, we're diving into not one, not two, but 10 of the most advanced pivot table tricks only expert Excel users know about. These took me years to uncover, but you're going to learn them in just a few minutes. Let's get into it. Suppose we work at a beverage company and here's the data set that we have for it. There's some data on dates over here, on the managers, their age, and the products that they sell. As you can see, there are different beverages with some financials on the side. And you can download this Excel file for free in the video description to follow along. To get set up, let's first add a pivot table by going to insert and clicking on pivot table. We're happy with this area and we'll press on OK. In the pivot table, let's quickly add the revenue on one side and the countries on the other to see the breakdown. You can see the table breakdown here on the side and the first advanced trick is custom sorting. Suppose that instead of having it in alphabetical order, which tends to be the default, we want to have Spain up front, followed by the US, France, Germany, and Italy. And this is the order we want. We could manually just drag these around so I can move this one up all the way to the top like that. But that's not ideal either as you have to do it every time. Instead, the first advanced trick is actually going over to file under options. In this pop-up, you'll notice there is an advanced section, which is the one we want to click on. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom area where it says general over here, we can create custom lists that affect our pivot tables. So let's click on that right here. And here towards the bottom, we can create a new list. We can either add this manually or go to import and simply select the cells that we want. So we want it in this particular order over here. I'm gonna press on import here. And now we have those list entries, so I can press on OK and OK again. So going back in the pivot table, if I filter this A to Z again, you'll notice that it now uses this custom order style. In fact, if I remove the countries entirely and I bring them back in, you'll notice that it also uses the custom style. This can be really useful if you need a certain order, like for instance, Spain being number one because it's the headquarters of this company. Next up in number two, up till now, if you wanted to find the percentage of the total, like let's say you wanted to find the percentage of Spain relative to the total, maybe you just selected the Spain value and divided by the grand total. Problem is you only get one of these and this isn't even in percentage format. Instead, you can go back inside of the pivot table. We'll add the revenue one more time over here. You can see right now it looks like it's duplicated, but the key difference is that we're going to right click and go to show values as a percentage of grand total. When you do, you'll see everything is in percentage terms, not just for Spain, but for all of the other countries too. Awesome, now going up to number three, you might have noticed that France has a very small number over here at just 1.8%. Maybe we want this to stand out a bit more, and for that we can use data bars. So all we need to do is go to that first value under conditional formatting, we're just gonna select data bars over here and let's say that we go for something like an orange fill like that. Just gonna select that first one for now and then we can press on this area right here and say all cells showing sum of revenue to values by country. Now you'll notice we have all of that breakdown. That said, maybe you don't quite like that there's the percentage still there. Maybe you only want that visual. If that's what you'd like, we can easily edit that by going back to conditional formatting and clicking on manage rules. You'll notice there's this pop-up and we just want to edit it. More specifically on this area, we only want to show the bar only. So we'll tick on that, press on okay. Let me apply that and okay again. And you'll notice we now have the visual, but we don't actually have the data behind it. Moving up to number four, and here we have the drill down feature. So far we've seen that the front sales aren't performing as well as we'd like. We want to do a deep dive on that, so you might have previously just gone ahead to the original data set like this and tried to filter for the country of France from here, but there's actually a much easier way. You just need to go to the pivot table. So we're looking at the country of France. It's this value here that we think is particularly low. So all we need to do is double click to drill down and you see we get the breakdown of the details of sum of revenue for the country of France. And we can just see all of the transactions that they've made even better, we can see who the managers are, so we could talk to them and see what's going on. Suppose we speak to the France managers and they want to speak to the best performing managers in our company to get some advice. 
To find that, we need to go over to the pivot table again, and this time we're looking for the managers over here as the rows, and we can put the values for the revenue here as the values. The problem is that this data is not in order, so we can of course just sort it quite easily by pressing on sort and largest to smallest. That said, we don't want to send this entire table as it's not very nice to show who the lower performers are. Ideally, we would only want to show something like the top 5 or the top 3. That's where custom filters come in. Let me show you how that works. Over here on the label side, we just need to right click and click on filter. Within this, you'll notice there's the top 10 option. It's not actually just the top 10 though. Once we click inside of it, you'll notice in the pop-up, we can customize it further just say the top five and we can also choose for what particular item we want that let's say i'm happy with the top five here i'm gonna press on ok and you'll notice we get that breakdown so that's much more respectful to send to our france managers next up in number six is one of my personal favorites but before we get into that if you're enjoying this content and you want to learn more you can also check out our range of courses which include excel power bi finance and valuation, and more, as well as a range of bundle packages. And what makes our courses different is that they're all applied to the real world. So aside from teaching the theory, our lessons also cover case studies that simulate the type of work you might be assigned in your day-to-day, -day, ranging from creating a financial model from scratch on Excel, to creating a PNL dashboard on Power BI, all the way to making a professional pitch deck presentation in PowerPoint. So if you're interested in checking this out, head over to the link in the description below. All right, back to the video. Now getting into number six, all of our managers are focused on a particular beverage. So it would be nice to see for these managers what their beverages are. One very visual and clean way to do that is by adding slicers. So we can go over to pivot table analyze and click on insert slicer. We want one more specifically for the products, press on OK. So this way, when the France managers see this data over here on the left, they can say, hey, I only work with Powerade. So let me see who's the actual Powerade head. The leader right here is David. If we go to Coca-Cola. It looks like Bill is number one for this beverage. Right now, we've seen how the slicer works with products, but it also works with other categories. For instance, I can click on the pivot table again under pivot table analyze and go to insert slicer one more time. You'll notice that I have all of these other options. Let's say I go for the date one, press on OK. And the only problem with the date is that we have way too many values. So it's kind of hard to find the right one. Instead, what we can do is go over and delete this first and use a timeline instead, which is particularly useful for dates. I can go to pivot table analyze again and click on insert timeline this time. You'll notice that only dates show up as that's what it's made for so i'm gonna press on ok and right here i have a timeline that i can easily filter as you can see i have this scroll bar over the side so i can move just to get the q2 part or i can get a particular month and on the top right hand side i can switch from months to years quarters and much more so it is super flexible and easy to use Speaking of managers, it would be interesting to find out if managers of a certain age group perform better than others. For that, we just want to get the revenue from here and add that as the values. And on the other side, we just want to drag and drop the age. That said, this isn't very easy to read as it's showing all of the separate ages. It would be nice to group these into people in their 20s, their 30s, 40s, etc. That's where the custom grouping feature comes handy. So we can just right click and press on group. When you do, you'll notice we have the starting at value. Let's say we start this at 20, so it's gonna go be from 20 to 29, from 30 to 39, etc. as the increments are of 10. Press on okay. And here's what it looks like. It seems like the large majority of the revenue comes from the people from 20 to 29. That said, we would obviously need to investigate how many there are because maybe there's just more people in this age group, so more managers than there are in these other age groups. So instead of the sum, maybe it makes more sense to add the average revenue, so value field settings, and I can choose the average from here. Right now, you can see that actually it's the 30 to 39 that bring the most revenue. Speaking of grouping, suppose that we want to categorize the data by soda and non-soda, so two separate groups there. Up till now, you might have thought of just creating a new column in here, so one Coca-Cola here would be a soda, Powerade would be a non-soda, etc. 
That said, there's potentially an easier way just using pivot tables. All I need to do here is select those that are sodas, so Coca-Cola, Diet Coke and Fanta. And now I can just right click and press on group. That basically creates a separate group for these. And under group one here, I can rename it from the formula bar. And let's say I call these the sodas. Then for this bottom part, the Dasani water and the Powerade, to select two at the same time, you just want to press the control key. Then I can right click and group again. This one is going to be, let's say the non-soda. And just like that, we have those two categories grouped. I can collapse both of them to see the breakdown. And it looks like we're more dominant in soda. Before we go over the bonus feature, suppose that we want to show each country their breakdown. So you can see right here, I've made this pivot table where I can choose the countries from the top part. I can say for Spain, let's see what kind of breakdown they have for the revenue and expenses by product. I can click on all to select all of them again. That said, as we're sending these to the regional offices, we don't want them to be able to see all of the other countries. If that's the case, there's a very easy fix. We just go over to pivot table analyze and it's called the report filter pages. It's right here under the options drop down. We want to go for show report filter pages. As soon as we do, we're going to get the country pop up, which is the one for the region. So that seems to make sense for us. Press on OK. And on the bottom, you'll notice that we have the breakdown for each of the countries. We have one for Spain only, for the US, France, Germany, Italy, etc. Finally, as the bonus, with the new group by and pivot by functions, you don't always need to use pivot tables. Up till now, if you wanted to find out the revenue by country, you probably just created a pivot table. But now we've got the group by function, which is potentially just a bit easier and more dynamic. From here, as the row field, I can choose all of the separate countries, press the comma key, and as the values, I can just choose all of the revenue figures, comma, and then for the function part, I can choose what I want. In this case, I want the sum of them, close a parenthesis, and hit enter. So you can see we have the same breakdown as we'd be able to get in a pivot table. Instead of the sum though, I can easily change this to say the percentage of the total. In fact, we can see that France is that same 1.8% we saw earlier. We can convert it into percentage from this part right here like that. That's just a mini preview of the group by and the pivot by functions. You should watch this video over here to learn how to use them properly and see why they might be better than pivot tables under certain scenarios. Or you can take our Excel course over here. Hit the like and the subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.